Hello and welcome to the NASDAQ studios in Times Square, New York. Today we, ha we have with us uh, a doctor and a businessman. He co-founded Conatus Pharmaceuticals, a company that develops drugs for the liver. His name is Steven Mento. Mr. Mento, hello. Thank you for being with us today. Hello, thank you. It's my pleasure. Um, I would like you to talk a little bit about um, your company. What mm -hmm. do you do, uh, the size, uh, your products? Sure. Well, we, we are very fortunate. We just listed on NASDAQ this year, so we're a publicly traded company. Um, our, our goal is to develop drugs to treat liver disease. We have a drug in clinical trials right now in both Europe and in the U.S. Uh, as a treatment for uh, catastrophic liver failure. The action of this drug is such that we believe it could treat patients with liver disease in its very early stages, up to and including very late stages, including just prior prior to and post liver transplantation. Um, so what's the main characteristic of a mid-size biopharma? Um, I think um, understanding the opportunity and being able to, to communicate that opportunity to uh, investors. As a small to mid-size biotechnology company, we don't have real revenue or commercial products. So our goal is to develop those products. And so people that look at our companies have to see the future and believe that the drug candidates that we're developing are going to have a significant impact on medicine, the treatment of medicine in the future. And how do you compete with the big guys? You know, I think that there's some things that small companies uh, can do better. We are quicker on our feet. We, for example, the indications that we are looking at in liver disease, we're the only uh, drug candidates are being developed in those particular indications. They're small um, as far as patient numbers are, are, are concerned, high medical need, so there are, I think, particularly uh, opportunities for little companies to exploit um, without having to focus so much on the end stage. We want to get the, the clinical development and, and understanding of how to treat patients effectively right, and that's really, I think, what we do better potentially than the larger companies. We are seeing maybe too much optimism about the, the economy these mm -hmm. days. Now that Washington is um, out of the way mm -hmm. and the euro seems to be here to stay, mm -hmm. what's your outlook for 2014? Well, I think one of the things that Canadis has done um, throughout its inception, we were a private company for eight years, is we looked to investment opportunities, not just in the United States. We had European venture firms as investors on that. We have European investors, key investors in our public market opportunity. So I think um, we um, welcome the challenge in dealing with today's economy. Fortunately, we have the resources now to develop uh, our drug. Emricosan is the name of the drug. Uh, and we're very hopeful that we're going to take those resources and use them to move this drug forward. So ultimately, it's going to be a treatment for patients with liver disease. I believe you have something going on in Spain. Tell me about it. Well, one of the one of the key uh, locations that we're looking at to do clinical trials in is Spain. Uh, it's one of the uh, locations in Europe that does a lot of liver transplantation. So it's not just the frequency of the disease; it's the um, uh, capabilities locally to uh, cure patients by giving them a liver transplant. And all three indications that we're looking at are patients that are either. Uh, getting ready for a liver transplant or patients that already have a liver transplant. So Spain will be an important, not only market opportunity in the future, but we also think an important place where we actually do clinical trials in Europe. And in the U.S., is Obamacare going to affect you in any way? Uh, not really. Not really at all. I think the key for, for companies like ours is, again, to have the resources to do the clinical um, trials that gets our drugs to a situation where it can be a benefit to patients. We will deal with what the, the economics of, of commercialization when we get there. Right now, the focus is to get to that position where we can actually commercialize the drug. And what is your role model as a CEO? Well, that's a really good question. I, I think, it's, I think it, it's not necessarily a biotech person. It, it's, it's individuals who are not afraid, uh, who, who uh, understand what it is they're trying to do and go about doing it and are, are willing to take the risks associated with, with developing the truly innovative therapies. Uh, we do the hard stuff. Um, I want to go back to Spain. There mm -hmm. are lots of people who want to uh, start a, a company, sure. uh, some of them uh, out of necessity. Sure. Do you think that entrepreneurship out of necessity can, can be successful? What was your case? Um, it was... Uh, it was really the only way to go. I started as a, uh, 
a researcher in a large pharmaceutical company, so I, I, I uh, understand uh, what it is that large companies do really well. I personally believe that there are things that small companies do better, and I think it's the early clinical stages of development. As a scientist, I always wanted to see my research applied. I always wanted to see it have benefit in patients. And the best way to do that, I found, was to be in a small company because it was kind of the cutting edge, the earlier phase, the excitement associated with understanding uh, what it is to uh, identify uh, a brand new kind of drug and then take it to places where it hasn't, you know, where no one's really done it before. And I think that's just best done in a small company entrepreneurial environment. So it was really just my internal feeling that I wanted to see the things that I was doing from a research perspective translated into real medicines for people. And what has been your, your biggest challenge so far? <laughs> um, having enough resources, and that's personnel uh, so, uh, and, and financial resources in order to do the clinical trials that are necessary to move a drug forward. Uh, it's a very expensive uh, exercise to do clinical development, and most drugs, frankly, fail. So it's, it's, it's a challenge to get investors to have confidence in the management team and in the particular drug candidate that you're doing before there's any commercial operation to be willing to put investments in your company and have the confidence that we're on the right pathway to potentially develop an, an important medicine. Do you think that investors are more confident today than they were 15 years ago, for example? Or I, I think it's different today. I think that in the early days of biotechnology, uh, there was a lot of investment on the promise. And I think um, justifiably investors are looking more on not just the promise and the innovation, but does the company have the expertise and resources to actually move that drug forward in clinical development? So I think that they're, they're looking at the investments a little bit differently, and I think their expectations are more, and they should be. So my last question would be any tip on how to get funding on a, on a dry financial market? I'm thinking about Spain and sure, the south sure. of Europe now. I, I think it's the same everywhere. I think you have to treat every meeting with every investor as being a meeting with a potential investor. And you have to recognize that it's going to take multiple meetings before your message is going to uh, hit home enough for that individual on the other side of the table or that group of individuals to have the, um, the commitment to actually invest in your company. Don't be afraid. And, and if they're not an investor now, I always go to those meetings, maybe it's going to be the next round or the next round after that. So treat everybody the same and, um, um, and don't be afraid. <laughs> Mr. Mento, thank you very much for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you.